Allah Azza wa Jal is protecting women. So Allah Azza wa Jal tells them that pray your houses. You don't have to pray Jum'ah. You don't have to pray mandatory prayers in the masjid. This is an obligation only on men. So this is for their protection. They're not requested to go and defend the country, to uh, give jihad. It, there are our precious stone. They should stay at home. We protect them. Some would say, okay, Akhi, my, my wife is much stronger than me. She has black belt in jiu-jitsu. She always beats the hell out of me. Let her go, go and defend. No. She Islamically has to sit home and be honored and uh, respected. Okay. The most important role for a, a woman is being a wife and a mother. And this doesn't mean, because now I, I, if I were in my, my uh, daughter's shoes, or my wife's shoes, they wouldn't have any problem with homosexuality. No, this is a, a, a rephrasing it. If I were in my daughter's shoes, what would I say? You're telling me, father, and they, sometimes my, my daughters claim this, you're saying that the best role is to be a mother or a what? Our wife. But we have high aspiration. We would like to work. We would like to do this. We would like to travel. We would like to do so many things. And I say, okay, no problem. As long as it is within the Islamic limitations. <coughs> but what is more fruitful for you as an individual? To stay and raise a family of imams, of scholars, of so many uh, uh, beneficial people to the society, to be the wife of a man who does so many great things for the society, and you're honored, you don't have to work, you don't have to suffer, and Allah Azza wa is rewarding you by Jannah. If you look at the list of the things that women have to do in Islam, to us it's very easy. The Prophet says, if a woman fasts uh, her, uh, her month, Ramadan, and she prays the five daily prayers, like us, huh? fasting, like men, fasting and praying. And she preserves her chastity, like men, presumably, men a little bit, yani. And finally, she obeys her husband. Four things. What happens? The Prophet said, she'll enter Jannah, she'll enter paradise. The men say, Yahi, I'd rather be a woman. I have to pray five times a day in the masjid, I have to provide for my family, I have to smile in my boss's face when I just want to smack him in the face, I have to tolerate my neighbors, I have to go and, 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 and do this with the car or the garage. So many things to do, and the women have only these things. As if they were easier, it's not, I know. It is one of the most difficult things for a wife to be tolerant and obedient and loving to a husband that does not shower except once every couple, a couple of months and whose mouth smell is as rotten as your socks and who does not care of how his hygiene and how he looks and all and subhanallah he the minute he enters the house he becomes crippled paralyzed he sits on the couch he's got the remote controls in his hand bring me a glass of water Bring, bring, bring the, the, the ice cream, uh, make some popcorn, do this, do that, mashallah. This is all what he does until it's 12 o'clock and then he goes to bed like a dead beast. It's a difficult thing for a sister to be a sister. We have to acknowledge this. But the reward is so huge. It is Jannah. Islam tells the, uh, uh, the sisters, do not use soft voice with men. Be serious, do not joke. Some of the some, some lectures I go to and I hear the sisters cracking jokes and laughing their heads off. And I'm from here, I'm, I'm sweating. <sighs> what are they doing? They're not supposed to do this. And that is why some schools of thought went to the extreme and said, women's voice is an awrah. And they should not speak. And this is wrong. <coughs> Nowhere in the Quran or in the Sunnah. On the contrary. A woman comes and complains to the Prophet while all his companions are around him. So he's not saying, shh, shh, don't speak. No, go ahead. But it depends how are you going to speak. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
What are you doing? Be serious. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Yes, this is the way you should talk to a Sheikh or to any Tom, Dick, or Harry if it's needed. I say in my uh, prayer and in my daily life, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So I follow what the Prophet tells me. So she says, Sheikh, but we would like to go with my girls at, at college or at uni to uh, uh, Switzerland for skiing. How can, how can they go and I'm, I don't go with them? It's haram. Yes, but I want to. Ya akhi or ya ukhi. Does everything we wish and hope for or want in this life materializes? Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, saw one of his uh, 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 sons wanting to buy something. And he said, my son, whenever you desire something, you buy it. This is not life. Even if you can afford it. So as a Muslim, I have to comply with, with my Islam. If you believe that niqab is must, which I do, in this case you have to uh, put it on whether you are in this society, in Saudi Arabia or wherever. This is a form of protection. And I believe if I wear a woman, I wear the niqab all the time. Because I don't have to care about how my, I'm, the, I'm wearing my hair. I don't have to care about my uh, uh, scar wounds and whatever. Everything is covered. Khalas. I easy go and I, I easy come. Well, uh, this facial expression stuff is well, I too much. Sisters, call me on the phone, please. Go video. I have to see your facial expressions. What is this? It's a question and answer. Why? I have daughters, with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when I take them to the dentist, I don't speak a word. She herself unveils up to the nose. The doctor says, I'd like to see your face. So that she, she, you're working on my teeth. You're not working on my eyes. You, so you don't need to do this. Well, I don't have, I don't intervene. It, it's your teeth, it's your face. You do whatever you want to do. Sisters are away. So this is what a lot of those who don't, who, who, who detest, who are agitated by Islam, always come up with, I have to see your face. If, yeah, if I go to a government office and I'd like to speak to a minister, for example, why does he insist on me unveiling? This is my own personal uh, uh, wish to cover my face. Yeah, do you have, does this minister, does this Judas, uh, 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 the guy that works in, in a jewelry shop, if a woman comes to him with micro jobs or mini skirts, does he say, listen, I, I can see your facial expressions, but I don't want to see any more expressions. Please cover up. Would, would they accept this? They wouldn't. So, subhanAllah, it, it has to do with your freedom of speech, your, what, what you believe in, what's your conviction. The brother is asking, is it permissible to have friends with the opposite sex? And the answer is no. <laughs> it's not permissible for a woman to travel. And the distance is not specified, meaning that it is not 70 kilometers and below this is okay, uh, more than that is not okay. It is what's considered to be traveling. So we are in Sheffield. If a sister wants to meet her husband in London, the people of Sheffield, when they go to London, do they shorten prayer? This is traveling. But if a sister in East London wants to go to West London, it might take an hour and a half, probably with a traffic jam or something more or less. Is this traveling? No. So if she's taking the tube, the coach, if she is with another sister in a cab, this is halal. What is not halal is to travel and whatever is considered in a city to be a traveling to another city, this is haram for her to travel without a mahram. What if she's going to study abroad like Islam? Wallahi, studying abroad for ilm, yani, obey Allah. Now, if a sister says, listen, I got a scholarship in Jami'at al-Imam in Riyadh, or in so-and-so Jami'at in al-Azhar, or in, in this country, I'll be accompanied by my mahram. And I will, he will take me to that campus. The campus is all females. I'm being taken care of. I cannot travel or leave or, you know, uh, uh, do this or that. I'm at always attended with food, with all my necessities. This case is halal. But for her to go 
to a university and somewhere else in Saudi or whatever and then travel from one place to the other and she goes and gets her own groceries and she has no mahram in that country. No, this is not a problem. Can she refuse her husband to marry another woman? If before the contract, yes, this is her right. So if someone proposes to you and you say, okay, I'm, I'm willing, but I put it as a condition that you may not marry a second wife. And if you do, then I have the right to call it off. This is your right. But if you're already married and he wants to get married to another woman, you have no say in it. You can't yeah, any influence. He's, he's, no man would go and ask the permission for his first wife and accept her to agree. It is painful. Us men think it's, eh, what is it, eh? well, another wife. But I usually talk to my wife like this and I say, if I get married again, you'll have 24 hours for yourself. You don't have to wear makeup. You don't have to take care of the house. You don't have to cook three meals. And th I think that this is the most important thing in my life. I don't work. To them, it's a different story altogether. It is not part of the marriage constitution that you seek the permission of your first wife or second wife or third wife you want to get married to another one. However, it is highly advisable if you want to do it to inform them, not like lots of the brothers come after 10, 20 years of marriage and say, well, this is my 18 years old boy from my secret marriage. This, this is bad, this is cheating, this is not good. I would not say it's haram, but this is not how a wife and a man should have their communication together. If you want to get married, a man can get married for a number of reasons and I can spill it out in no time. But it's his right. Allah gave him this right. Usually, no one does it for the sake of, you know, mashallah, come, how many wives do you have? I still, mashallah, you're the man. <laughs> it's not like this. It's not, I have two wives, alhamdulillah. My second wife I married 23 years ago. And if I show you my head, you could see the high heel traces on them. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. And it's difficult. And not only that, I'm always intimidated that I will go to hell if I'm not fair to them. So yani, every time I think twice before buying something or giving something, you have to care about their feelings. If you stop talking on the phone and she's next to you, how is it you balance between answering her and taking care of her feelings? It is a headache, but it is something you have to do. When you have to do it, you have to do it. So uh, I would uh, say yani, clearly Islamically, it is not part of the responsibility of a man to seek the permission of his first wife before getting married in one house. This is, I believe, I believe personally that men should be segregated from you and they should have their own quarters. If you were to work with men, you can do this by either Skype or telephone or emails, try to avoid contact because contact is not permissible at all. I am not against females. Uh, what do you call it? Male, male chauvinism? Yeah, I, I'm, I don't have this. Yeah, and with the grace of Allah, I have two wives. So I'm completely with the, the sisters. I have 13 girls. No boys. So I don't know how to treat boys. Huh? All around me I see is girls. I love my daughters. I have four of them married, alhamdulillah, six grandchildren. Four of them are girls also. So I'm swimming in an ocean of oxygen. <laughs> so don't do ever think that I have anything against my yani, daughters or my wives. But by Allah, I care for them more than I care for myself. Because not because they are my honor, because I love them, I cherish them, and I try to apply whatever is in the Quran and Sunnah to them because I know this is the best for them. Allah Azza wa knows best.